Ferrari, it was more important to him that people would race his cars than actually pose in their cars. The 250 short wheelbase is preferred by many to the GTO because I think it's a more forgiving car. It's a more of a dual purpose car. The ultimate dual purpose car, I think. They very much were cars that you could drive to a circuit and simply race. People smile at these older cars. I think the envy and the social unacceptability of maybe a modern car, the pose factor if you want, is not there. And, and people take a very benign view of old classic cars. They do smile. And I, and I think that's lovely. I think the history of a car absolutely intrigues me because I actually feel you've become part of that story and um, it's such a privilege. In lap eight, Sterling Moss, number seven, took the lead from Parks and before long was lapping a few competitors. Completing 109 laps in three hours, Moss won. Lucky number seven. It was also his seventh TT win. To be able to get the car out, to be able to drive it, to give it the full beams, but that keeps you going for a week really, doesn't it? The adrenaline's flowing, all your nerves are tingling, you are totally focused on a car, and isn't it great that you can get a thrill out of a car at 60 miles an hour, instead of having to get a thrill out of a car at 160 miles an hour. Goodwood, victory today would give him the coveted hat-trick. He drove against top-rate opposition of Aston Martin, and in the lower classes, Lotus and Porsche. That Sterling was back in pre-accident form, he showed right from the start. The Goodwood circuit is just a little short of two and a half miles. Hot on Sterling's heels was Roy Salvadori driving an Aston Martin. Number 10, Innes Island, Aston Martin. This year's up-and-coming star. The 2119 GT is the most iconic 250 GT short wheelbase in existence. DK Engineering have looked after the car for over 30 years, and although it remains in remarkably original condition, the opportunity to return it to its spiritual home couldn't be missed.